Good morning, um, paint pouring people. Um, I'm going to do another little um, pour for you again today. Uh, just with these colours that I've mixed up that I'm trying to get right for a commission that I've got. Seems a bit of a weird mix, but I'm really hoping that they turn out nicely. Uh, in the next few days, I will be on my endeavour again trying different PVA glues as pouring mediums with acrylic paint. So this is the next one. This isn't this particular one, but I will be doing this this week and I'll post it. So this is one that you get from a discount shop and it's only $6.95 in Australia for one litre. So I'll see how that one works. So it's the endeavour to find the perfect pouring medium at a reasonable cost so everybody can have a go at this art. Again at my place today it's a bit noisy because my husband's outside on his excavator um, trimming some trees up and then collecting them. So sorry if it's a little bit noisy but just bear with me or turn the volume down. So this little canvas, I've stuck my masking tape on the back. I like to do that if I'm going to um, sell a painting, obviously, because you don't want the, you know, it's okay to have the paint on the back because that's what artists do, but I just think it leaves a little bit neater. These are my push pins. I'm thinking that you may be able to get them from Kmart, but I got these from Office Work. They're giant push pins so they keep the canvas up off the um, off your surface another thing I want to just touch on to say is that just make sure your surface that you're working on is dead flat if you can get a, a spirit level which I have one here but my husband's pinched it again to just make sure your surface is flat otherwise you can end up with you because it's a fluid art an acrylic fluid art you can get your painting slimed in all over the place so I'm just going to get started with these colors I am using global colors again today they're a little on the thick side so I'm trying to explain what my consistency is but I use different consistencies for different pores this one I didn't want too thick because I do want it to move around the canvas a little bit um, and morph instead of staying tiny cells I want it to morph this particular one again is with my Elmer's glue all and uh, water pouring medium I'll put the, my card up don't forget if you'd like to follow my endeavors and tutorials I have a Facebook page called uh, acrylic art by Jilly cube and I also my YouTube channel, which you're probably watching this on. So please subscribe and it's free. Um, enjoy this journey with me. Okay, let's get started. This is called Flesh. So I'm not gonna put that down first. I just wanna put a bit of this ear. Cool red, oh God, you're never, I always forget me what's the cool and what's the warm. This is cool red, but it actually looks a lot like magenta. So I'm gonna just put a bit of this down first because I'm gonna swipe in this color. And normally I don't put any of my swipe color down, but I'm hoping this stays underneath. So when I balloon kiss it, it'll pop back through. So, okay, just your, snaking around i just find this as i said many times the best way because you can do it the same every time in this fashion and get a different result in that it morphs into whatever itself so as i've said i've got my pouring medium card and what i do there and there's only um two drops of helmar silicon oil in these cups Somebody's asked me, I've got messages, what do you do to get silicon off? With the Helmar that I use, which um, Helmar silicone is what I just, two, two drops, um, two to four drops maximum. When, the, when it, your painting's fully dry and cured, about four weeks, 
I just go over with a dry, just a dry cloth to dust it, and then a, just a damp soapy cloth that's dipped in a dishwashing liquid and wrung out really well, and just one pour, one wipe over it, and that usually gets rid of the silicone, any silicone residue. And because you're not using that much in these particular paintings, um, I have no trouble once I've gloss coated them and I have other video there to show you my gloss coating technique. So that was um, an avocado that, um, that I made up myself out of, okay. believe it or not, yellow oxide with a blob of blue. So I just, any colours that I'm custom making, I just add bits and bit, blob, 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 little bit until I get the colour I want or I don't want. <laughs> So then you know not to make but i wanted to make an avocado color because i was asked for this color to be in the painting so this is actually a test pour for a larger one that i i have got to do at some stage so and this is just white okay so again it's just Tilt your canvas just very slowly, just making sure that your paint's covering your whole canvas. Again, it's tilting it slowly. Always recenter when you finish tilting one way, recenter to go and tilt again the other. Don't worry if your very corners of your canvas are not completely covered because you can tip off all nearly all of your paint just trying to get a corner covered and I'll show you what I will do to the corners if they're not actually covered. Okay, that's to, let's recenter it again. Bring it back that way. See, my colors always usually think, oh my goodness, what is she doing? But I do have an eye for color. Um, and know that it's going to work out pretty good. It's not very often I have a failure with colour wise. I'm not saying, so, and see the corners just pick up some of the runoff of the paint and just finger pop it, just dab it with your fingers because it doesn't matter because the end result will cover all of that up. So just finger pop it anywhere that your paint's not covering the edges of your canvas, just pop it with your finger. It doesn't matter if it looks messy at the moment because it certainly won't when you've finished the whole process. So I'm just going to wash my hands off. It's an absolutely glorious summer day in Queensland. This is our winter and it's um, oh, 22 or 23 degrees, really nice and warm. Okay, the next process, I'm going to use that um, red again, just a very thin line down the centre I'm going to do. Don't want to do too much, maybe a second for the next. Very thin line down the centre. Okay, and this is what makes the magic happen. I use these plastic, plastic bile dividers. I just cut off the little nib um, they're from Officeworks, I think you can get them from Kmart. Um, plastic file divider is the best thing for swiping and then you just wash them and reuse them. So just lay about a centimetre the top of your file divider into your paint and draw the paint towards you. Always amazing that tiny little bit of colour in the centre, how much it covers your work like ends up dominating so you have to be mindful of your swipe color but i love using other colors other than white or black for a swipe color so much more interesting okay so you just as i said this particular one again is with my elmer's glue all not the school glue i don't use the school glue anymore because I just wasn't having good results with it. It would make the paint separate and crack. I know lots of people have watched my videos and said, oh, you can get 
glue all in Australia. I live here and I and it's uh, it's in well if you can you're I mean I've searched and searched the internet you can get it off uh, craft online you can get it off eBay but it costs ends up costing about $65 per four liters it's not bad if you think how much pouring medium costs you but anyway oh so look again <laughs> they do always create the best cells with the glue all so I'm just anybody that uh, follows Kmart or Target if they can keep putting on the site to stock the Elmer's glue all not school glue or clear glue it's called glue all because you can see straight away the difference in the cells and that that's popped up okay what you will need if you're a beginner is you don't need to actually use a big mama butane torch that I've got you can use the small cream brulee ones and they're butane so the smaller one you'll fill with gas but I haven't used this for absolutely ages now I'm confident with my bigger gun but if you only just starting out this bigger butane torch and you have to be so aware all the time of only just dabbing your painting in the never keep it on the same spot for longer than a second because otherwise you'll set your canvas alight but it's this is my method of just dabbing getting a whole load of small cells in this which is unusual for um, glue all so that's come up cell city again really um, really coming up gorgeous little cells there so if you're happy to leave it like that that's all well and good um, because what will happen is as you leave it those cells might stretch out and start to morph into one another and create different effects like butterflies and dragonflies but I'm gonna just give my work a few balloon kisses because while it's wet they won't actually hold the um, sort of petal looks if it's if there's a lot of paint on your canvas they'll morph into different objects so that's what's so interesting about it okay just getting my trusty balloons probably for this size canvas a smaller just one I've had um, blown up for quite a few days and this is the bigger one so I'll just give it a few viewing balloon kisses to show you the options that you have got if you you're quite happy with your painting like that leave it if you want some embellishment then try this if you're new to it it's just push your balloon in it you you can actually put that onto another canvas I'm not going to today it's just quick take it up you see there that that's actually got lots of paint if I was doing and wanted it left in petal looks I would wait till my paints a little bit drier that was a bit of a balloon roll there so I'll show you that technique is you put it on and roll it gently but not too heavy otherwise you're gonna wipe your paint off so it's put it on and roll it where you see the paint separate, that will close back up because there's so much paint on this. I'll give it, try the smaller one. Actually, I'll, I'll dip it where there's already paint. Do normally in between each dip, um, wipe the paint off, but in areas that you might want to add a bit of the different color, you can. That's it, this is what's so, interesting about this art is that you'll develop your own little ways and techniques to change your canvas and your work to make it your own it won't always look like mine and that's what I like about 
even this instructional video is you won't ever get it to look exactly the same as mine or you maybe you will but the thing is you want to make it so it looks like yours not mine so you'll develop your own little tips and tricks through, throughout for yourself so actually really liking these cells here that's and the colour is turned out really nice for what you think was yuck. I'm going to give you a close up now. And I'll post some more photos tomorrow when it's dried further. Oh, yeah, it looks a bit messy up here. But I'll look at those gorgeous cells we've got in there. Absolutely, they're lovely. That's why I love working so much with Elmer's glue. It gives you a completely different formed cell than the other glues I've been using. The closest I've got to this, and which is really nice, is the Duramax glue that you can buy in Australia easy enough. So I'm going to try and find a bigger bottle of the Duramax so I can again mix and try but this will morph and look completely different by tomorrow morning. So I hope that's helped any of you um, in this pursuit of your art and therapy. Um, please subscribe to my channel and you'll get all the tips and tricks and first to um, see my videos come up. Thank you once again.